Hello there science friends and welcome once again to Photoshop for the scientist. So in this video, or at least what I think is going to be a two-parter, I'm going to show you how to make a scientific poster inside Photoshop. So you're probably used to making your posters maybe in something like PowerPoint, which is all well and good. You can make a perfectly fine poster in PowerPoint. But if you want something with a little more power, or maybe a little more control over uh, your design and layout, uh, Photoshop is a great choice. I've also used InDesign, but because this is uh, Photoshop for the scientist and not InDesign for the scientist, I'll show you how to do it here. So without further ado, let's uh, get started. So the first thing we want to do is uh, set up our new document. So we'll say File New. And so right off the bat, uh, you want to bear in mind what size your poster is going to be. So obviously you want to go ahead and check this before you do anything. Uh, a lot of conferences will have specific sizes they want for their posters. And believe you me, it is not fun to have to go back and resize everything because once you realize you've made your poster the incorrect size. So for the time being, I'm just going to go with what I think is a pretty standard poster size, which is 4 feet by 3 feet, or 48 inches by 36 inches. I'm going to go ahead and call this, I don't know, poster. And I've already set my uh, dimensions here ahead of time. Uh, just make sure you're set to inches or whatever unit you prefer to work in. Uh, resolution for a poster that's this size, we're probably fine to get away with 150. Um, I know in the past I've said for figures you want to go to 300, but when we have a bigger poster, 150 is perfectly fine. RGB color is probably what we want. Again, you might want to check with your printer ahead of time. Sometimes I've been asked to do it in CMYK. Um, other times I've put it in CMYK and then been told to go back to RGB. So I'm just going to stick with the default for now. All these other defaults are fine. And again, uh, I will show you here, uh, like we did in our document setup lesson, which I think was the very first video, uh, you can go ahead and save uh, this profile here, this preset, if we want to make a poster again in the future. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call it poster. And then you can see it's just saving all of these presets here. We'll say OK. And now in the future, if we want to make a second poster, we can just select this from the list, and uh, we'll be good to go. We won't have to worry about any of this. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. Maybe we've got the new document here. And so the next thing you want to do, and I think for this video, we're just going to be looking at layout of the poster. Uh, in later videos, we'll talk about actually putting in text and figures. But uh, for the time being, the first thing we're going to look at is layout. So for me, uh, what I would probably do is set up some guides so that I can have a general sense of where I'm going to be putting stuff. And so again, very much like the document setup video that I made, we're going to use the view guides option here. But we're going to select new guide layout. And so this sort of auto-generates some guides for you, but we'll go ahead and uh, set up what we think will be good for our poster. So uh, on a poster like this, I'm usually uh, prone to using three columns. I think a three-column setup is nice. But again, this is all sort of what you like and whatever you want to do or however you think your data lends itself to being laid out. So we can specify any number of columns here. I'm going to say three. Uh, the width, I just want them to be equal width, so I'll leave that blank. Uh, the gutter is the space in between my columns here, and I don't know, 0.133, which was the default, seems to work fine for me. The rows, I want uh, two rows, a top row for my title and uh, authors and all of that stuff, and then a bottom row for everything else. Uh, I don't really want it in the middle, but I'll come back and fix that later. And then margin here is that's going to be your sort of, obviously, your margins around the edge. So for me, I find I like to do 0.5 inches all the way around. Um, I've seen other people recommend one inch all around. Uh, again, as long as you're not going right to the very edge, uh, one or 0 0.5 inches has seemed to work well for me in the past. So I'm going to say OK. And like I said, I don't really want this uh, horizontal guide going down the middle. So I'm going to move it up just with my move tool. And for me, uh, in terms of uh, title size, I don't know, I kind of just eyeball it. But if I give myself maybe, let's say, so we're at 0.5 inches here, uh, this is 6, 7, 8, and so 8 and a half here. So if we go 8 and a half, that's going to give us 8 inches of title, which I think is more than enough space. Um, again, these are just kind of rough guides, um, but if you think about your poster as a whole, this seems like a good space to have all of your title and author and uh, sponsor information. Uh, I'm going to go and get another guide just by clicking on the ruler here and dragging down just to give myself a little bit of a gutter um, from my title area to my workspace area. And so I'm pretty happy with that basic layout. Um, I should note that I've changed the color of my guides here because normally they're cyan and I find that to be a little intrusive. Uh, if you want to change it to something 
a little less abrasive, uh, just double click, uh, whoopsie daisy, well just <laughs> double click it and you can set your custom to whatever color you like, I think I've just done a custom light purple here, oh, it's falling off the screen but I'm just going to cancel out of there and I'm going to move this guy back to 0 0.5 because I made a mistake. Yeah. Actually no, I'll just get rid of it entirely and I will say new guide horizontal 0 0.5 there we go, back in business. Okay, so we've got these guides set up nicely, and I don't want to be inadvertently moving them around like I just did, so I'm going to go up and say view, uh, and I'm going to say lock guides, so now I can't grab them by accident anymore. And what I also might do is I'm going to go to new guide layout again, and uh, it's going to give me this two rows again, but I'm just going to get rid of that, because what I want to do is say uh, save this preset. So just like we save the preset for the document size, I'm going to save the preset for these guides, uh, which I've actually already done. I guess I'll just save over it. But again, I'm just going to call it poster and save. Yes, I would indeed like to replace it. Say OK. And so again, if we ever want to come back and make a new poster, we can just come up to new guide layout and select poster from the list and we'll get this exact layout again, which is uh, very handy. Okay, so we've got our guides, we've got our document basically sized the way we want. The next thing I would usually do when making a poster is think about what I want my background to look like. So, I mean, while you're perfectly welcome to leave a blank white background, uh, I just find that's a little boring. So usually what I'll do is put some kind of gradient. Uh, it's just something subtle, uh, not too fancy, but at least a little fancier than plain old white. So to do that, I will create a new layer, and then I will select the gradient tool. Actually, I've got an even better idea. Let's get rid of this layer. I'm going to go new gradient layer. So down from the little layer adjustment layer button here. So I'll say new gradient and I will pull this back onto the screen. And so really now it's just whatever you are, whatever your imagination tells you is right here. Uh, I mean, black to white is not super exciting. So I might click it there. And for me, I'm always a, I like doing a blue, a blue to white myself. But really you can pick whatever color you like. Uh, and this is kind of a gross looking blue. Maybe something like this. Say OK. And then instead of, uh, I mean, I've got white in the background here, but I'm just going to go and instead of opacity here, uh, how do we do this? OK, so my top ones are opacity. So you can see here it's 100% opacity to 0%. But I'm just going to set this back to 100. And I'm going to change this black into white. And then I will say OK. Maybe I will uh, bump down this uh, blue a little more. So we just have blue near the bottom. Oopsie daisy. Uh, dang it. OK, there we go. All right, well, whatever. I'm just going to put that <laughs> this white one here. That works also perfectly fine. I don't feel like dicking around with it. OK, so I'm going to say OK and OK. So now we've got like a pretty nice looking uh, blue to white gradient background. I will point out that at any point you can double click uh, the little gradient uh, icon there and change it. Maybe I would like to move it up a little bit. Say OK and OK. And there we go. That's, we've got a nice, a nice looking background. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer down because I don't want to be inadvertently grabbing it or drawing on it or anything like that. So this just ensures that uh, it's going to be locked in place and really we don't have to worry about it anymore. OK, so things are starting to take shape here. So probably the next thing that I would do is I want to start thinking about how I want to lay out my data onto this poster. So obviously up here we're going to be having uh, our title and our authors and maybe our logos and sponsors over on the left or the right here. And then usually typically on a poster I do something like summary uh, or add an abstract, maybe objectives and background. Uh, on my left hand column and then maybe a couple columns of results and then discussion and acknowledgments. Um, some methods are in there somewhere. So again this really comes down to what you think your data lends itself to or how you think uh, things would flow nicely. But once you have a general sense we can go ahead and start creating like a little template for ourselves to help us keep it, uh, everything organized. So to do that I'm going to select the square tool, which you can, if you don't have, or the rectangle tool, you can click and hold and select rectangle. Uh, I'm just going to create some sort of gray squares. So you want to set your fill to, I mean, it could be anything. I'm just going to choose a gray. And uh, I'm going to put a stroke on here. Again, it's not super important, but this is what I'm doing. And then I'm going to just kind of like uh, draw roughly out some, some squares here. So let's say 
let's say I want my uh, abstract to be about this big. And I should say you can zoom in a little to make sure that you're lining up with your grid line or your guidelines here. And if you're not, uh, make sure you want to go up to uh, Snap Do, and you'll want to say Guides. And uh, layers will be useful in the future, so I would also leave that checked for now too. But anyway, so I don't know. I'm kind of happy with that. I'll zoom back out. And then if I want to just like block the rest of these areas, uh, all I want to do is just if you hold the Alt key. And while your move tool is selected, you hold Alt and you click and drag, and you can release Alt at this point once you've started, and uh, kind of just drag this around to where you want it. I should also say, uh, with your move tool, you should have this button clicked, which uh, says automatically select the group or layer, because if you don't have that clicked, you're going to run into some, into some problems. Uh, so let's think here. I've got my summary, maybe some background here. Uh, if you have the show bounding box uh, button selected here, you've got these little bounding box uh, selectors, and I might shrink this down for my objectives, and I'll hit the numerical enter key, or the that is the enter key on the numerical keypad uh, to lock in those changes. And then I'll do the same thing, maybe my second column here, uh, bring that into these guides, and then let's say my results are going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, I'll hit again the enter key, and I don't think it's lined up, so I'm just going to nudge it with the arrow keys. There we go. Again, I'll hold Alt, drag this guy over here. I'm going to hide this, my properties panel, for now. Um, this looks okay to me, and then maybe what I'll do is uh, make this guy a little bit bigger. Hit the Enter key, and then how about we do, again, I'll hold Alt, drag this down to the bottom. And maybe for this section, I'll have it span across two columns like this and might maybe nudge it up just a little bit. I don't know if that actually did anything, but maybe if I hold Alt on the scroll wheel, I will uh, zoom in a little. And Oopsie daisy. Let me make it a little bigger. Again, hit the Enter key. I'm going to hold the Alt key and scroll out again. And then for my last little section here, actually, you know what, maybe I will make this guy a little smaller. Hit Enter. Oops. Hit Enter. I will hold Alt. Drag it down like that. This is probably not super exciting for you, but again, we're just doing a basic uh, block in here. Probably make this will be my tiny little either discussion or uh, future direction section. Nudge this over a bit. Nudge it up with the arrow keys, and then lastly, bring down my last one, and this will be kind of my references or acknowledgement section. Hit enter. Might make this. I'm going to zoom in again a little bit and bring this up and then also hit enter and then I see this isn't lined up with my guide so I'll just nudge it over a bit with the arrow keys same with the box above okay so it's starting to take shape nicely and then lastly uh, I'll do my title section uh, which this is probably roughly the size that I want so I'll alt drag up here just try to line it up with my guides I might make it a little bit longer so I'll go over here like that drag it down and hit enter Okay, so now I've got kind of my basic outline of all of my different sections. If I wanted to really go all the way, I could uh, put in some titles here just to remind myself of what I'm doing. So, uh, first of all, uh, you want to check whichever box you have selected. So, probably the easy way to do is if you hit the V key to select your move tool and then make sure again that this box is selected. Uh, you just click whatever box you want to write on and then hit the T for text and you'll see the little circle, dotted circle around my text cursor. And what this means is that you're going to be drawing or writing text within this square, which is exactly what I want. So I will click and I'll just write myself a note that says title, because this is where I'll put my title. And I will hit the numerical enter again. Do the same thing over here, hit the V move tool key and select this guy, hit my T key for my text. And I'll say this is the summary, hit enter, do the same thing down here, T key for text, click in, let's say this is objectives, hit enter, down here, V key, select, and then my T key, call this one methods, oopsie daisy, hit enter, and we'll call this one, let's say results one, hit enter, and call this guy Results 2, maybe, if you have a couple different uh, types of results you want to break up. And this guy down here, let's call this Discussion, I'll hit Enter, and then lastly, we'll call this one References. 
Okay, so that looks, uh, oops, got a little spelling mistake here. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I could put a box here that says sponsors, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my brain to remember that one. So yeah, this looks good. So now obviously this is, we don't want this sort of way in our face like this. Again, I should mention that if you want to make any kind of little minor adjustments, it's just a matter of going in with your move tool and maybe, uh, you might want to, you'll have to zoom in maybe. But if you want these guys to be closer together, you can just kind of drag that up. But in eventually, once you're happy with how things look, uh, you'll want to group all of this crap together and because uh, you don't want all of these extra layers just floating around confusing you. So to do that, uh, you can select your bottom layer and then scroll up to your top and then you're going to hit Control G. Or you can click the little group icon here, but if you're in shortcuts like I am, Control G will put all of these um, text and box layers into a single group. And let's just call this layout. Now let's call it basic layout, even better. And then I'll hit enter. And I'm going to also go ahead and, well actually before I lock this down, I'm going to set the opacity to something really, really small here. So maybe let's try 20%. So you can see now this kind of gives us just like the basic uh, layout of what we wanted uh, without being too in our face and it won't hopefully obstruct what we actually want to do. You can set it to whatever you like. Fine, if you go down to 10, uh, it's probably not quite enough. So 20 for me is uh, perfectly fine. And I, then I will hit the lock button. So again, now we can click around without having to worry about inadvertently selecting any of these. Right, so there you have it. Uh, that's kind of how you'd set up the basic layout for your poster. And I think we're off to a pretty good start here. But because we're already at uh, almost 17 minutes here, I think I'll put a pin in that for today, and in the next video, or videos, depending on how things look, I'll show you how to start using, uh, putting in things like text and your images and your graphs and all that junk in here, and uh, we'll be on our merry way to making a nice looking poster. So with that, I guess I'll sign off. Um, I am setting up a Patreon page, so uh, you can expect a video about that soon. In fact, it's already set up, but I will provide more details for that later. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. But in the meantime, I will sign off by saying, you worked hard to get all of that data of yours, so why not put in the extra effort and make a great looking poster inside Photoshop. Okay, well, that does it for today, folks. I will see you all next time. Just one second here, before you go, I've got one more thing to talk about, and that is I've set up a new Patreon channel, or feed, uh, whatever they're calling these things. But basically, if you're looking to uh, help support Photoshop for the Scientist, or if you feel like you've learned something from these videos, then you can head over there and maybe pledge a dollar or two per video, and that would be very much appreciated. But if you're just a grad student and you don't have a lot of extra money to kick in, that's cool too. I mean, mostly these videos are just meant to be helpful. Uh, otherwise, yeah, feel free to subscribe or tell your friends, and uh, I guess that's really all I have to say. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time.